Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss on topic reproduction in organisms and this video is presented to you by www.examhe.com. So first of all is in asexual reproduction we will discuss regeneration, budding, spore formation in this video as we have discussed fission and fragmentation in our previous video. So what is regeneration? Many organisms has ability to regrow their lost or injured part and many are capable to give rise to complete individual from their body part. So this whole process is called regeneration. For example if we take a starfish, in this diagram you can see if a starfish lost his one arm, it will regrow or can develop its new arm so this type of process is called regeneration similarly in lizard you can see lizard has an capability to regrow its lost tail like this okay so regeneration in hydra in regeneration in hydra if the hydra divided into two then each of the fragment or each of the body part each of piece will develop into a new organism okay so what is the difference between fragmentation and regeneration so in fragmentation an organism break into fragment and each fragment develop into new organism whereas in regeneration organism may or may not develop into new individual in fragmentation we have seen that each part of each uh, part of fragment will develop into new individual but in uh, in this you can see in regeneration an organism sometime will develop only its lost part see this tail cannot give rise this uh, broken tail cannot give rise to a full lizard full body of a lizard so but this is also regeneration also human liver shows regeneration okay so likewise this is the difference between fragmentation and regeneration in this diagram you can see if this fragment will grow a new organism like this then this is fragmentation and if only a fragment only an arm is developing in an organism then this is regeneration okay so next we are going to discuss budding so in budding production of a new individual from an outgrowth of the parent individual on the basis of the formation of bud budding is differentiated into two form exogenous bud and endogenous bud for example if we take this is an example of exogenous bud in exogenous bud the bud formation take place outside the body okay in exogenous bud the bud formation take place outside the body but remain attached to parent cell and in endogenous bud the bud formation take place inside the body and further it grow as an individual when come out of the body so exogenous bud is seen in hydra yeast and endogenous bud is seen in sponges so in this diagram a multicellular hydra 
budding is shown here so this bud is a part of parent cell one of the cell see what is happening here is one of the cell of this parent cell will grow and develop into two like this okay this is the single cell which grow into a bud okay like a cell is present here and this cell develop into a bud this is a multicellular organism it has a well organized cells many cells in this i am talking about a single cell which is present here so after this the bud this cell will divide continuously and this cell will develop a new individual with a tentacle new hydra with the tentacles these are the tentacles present in the parent hydra and these are the tentacles present in the new hydra okay after that uh when this new organism or new hydra will grow and mature into an individual it will detach from the parent cell and get attached to the substratum substratum and will develop into a new individual sorry i am writing it again substratum okay so these are the steps that i have discussed small outgrowth called bud is formed on the free end bud is start developing mouth and tentacles develop on buds fully formed hydra detached from the parent body and develop into a new individual so next in this diagram you will see bud formation in yeast so yeast is a unicellular organism it has only a single cell so when the bud start developing this nucleus start dividing into two and one of the nucleus uh, one of after the division one of the nucleus will uh, goes into the bud and the other one will remain in the parent cell and likewise the bud will develop into two so in this way a new yeast cell will form so these are the steps uh a yeast is a single celled organism small outgrowth appear at one end of the uh, one end which is called bud slowly the bud get enlarge in size after that a nuclear division will start taking place the nuclear will divide into two nucleus will divide into two and two daughter nuclei will be developed one daughter nuclei goes into the bud and the other remain into the parent cell now you will see endogenous bud endogenous bud is observed in sponges this sponge sponge is attached to a substratum this is the base is called a substratum so uh buds are present here you can see along the wall of sponges and this is osculum this is a hollow area from which water is intake and coming out from the organism okay so uh, now you will see this is gamule so what is gamule is the endogenous bud present inside the sponges is called gamule so this is the structure of gamule in this structure you can see it has two membrane the inner membrane this one and the outer membrane also you can see this spines 
like a structure which is called spicules these are made up of silica or calcium so this outer membrane also protect the parent cell in adverse condition okay so when the there is no adverse condition when there is a favorable condition these bud will come out and you can see the micropyle end here when this bud come out it get attach to the substratum this bud get attached to the substratum through this micro pile and start growing as a individual sponge all the points are given here you can go through it next is spore formation a spore is a single or several celled structure that detached from the parent and give rise to a new individual when the environmental condition are favorable so the production of a spore is called sporogenesis okay for example you can see in bacteria algae and fungi there are two types of asexual spores in fungi produced by are produced first is sporangiophore and the another one is conidiophore the example of a sporangiospore is rhizopus which is commonly also called bread mold you have uh, observed the rotten bread if you have observed you have observed the rhizopus fungus present on the bread and the example of conidiospores is aspergillus so actually what is happening in this is this is a sporangium cup shaped structure uh, so in this uh, sporangium spores are developing there are many spores present in it so whenever the condition is unfavorable unfavorable this spore remain inside the sporangia but when there is favorable condition the spores released into the atmosphere and develop into a uh, individual fungi this long part you are you are seeing is uh, hypha okay so sporangio four are of two type zoo spores and a plano spores when the spores are motile movable so it is called zoo spores and when the spores are non motile so it is called a plano spores so you can see the growth of rhizopus on bread in this diagram in this figure okay conidiophore in aspergillus chain like formation at the end of hyphae is called conidiophore you can see the chain like a structure like this so there is no bulb like a structure as you, as you have seen in sporangiophore okay it is also co called metospores as generated by the process of mitosis so each of these spores will develop into a new full organism full fungi this is the picture of aspergillus thank you for watching this video